a cosmonaut. As a matter of fact, both uh, manned space programs, at least the American manned space program, seems to be phasing out. The Russians are going ahead on an orbital basis, but I wonder now whether they'll go that quickly after the, the tragedy of Soyuz 11. Well, I suppose they'll have a lot of uh, second thinking to do, as happens in all of these situations. It's happened after our Apollo tragedy here with <coughs> the fire. Uh, but they are talking about the linking up, and it's looking somewhat hopeful. We're going to have a couple of Apollo spacecraft left over, some boosters left over, and uh, there's some things that are being talked about in, in that regard with the Russians for somewhere down the line, four or five years away. Of and they're exchanging biomedical information rather slowly. They have been over the years. King, the voice of uh, mission control here at uh, Cape Kennedy, uh, who will be describing the events of the countdown into the liftoff itself. This is a $445 million adventure, a 12-day a 12 day trip uh, to the moon, the longest ever, and expected to bring back more scientific knowledge than all of the space uh, flights up to now. The weather has been good. It looks like uh, the thousands of persons who have crowded here for the last summer launch in the entire Apollo program, the others coming March and December, uh, will get a good view. And here's Jack King. General Sequenza has been armed and we are go. Launch Operations Manager Paul Donnelly just wished the crew good luck and Godspeed and received an expression of thanks from all three crew members. We'll be coming up shortly on the automatic sequence. Three minutes, ten seconds, firing command enable. Firing command on. We have the firing command. We're now on the automatic sequence. And the tanks in the three stages of the Saturn V that contain those propellants will begin to pressurize. Mm -hmm. The countdown is still proceeding. And we're at now two, two minutes, 50 seconds and counting. We understand there is an estimate that there are more than a million people in the area here to view the launch. The traffic has been heavy since 2 o'clock this morning. The beaches are packed and the roads are packed. Two minutes, 35 seconds and counting. We're monitoring our status board here in firing room one. Our uh, ready lights are on, concerned with spacecraft, emergency detection system, instrument unit. Our preparations are complete, and the automatic sequence is continuing. Two minutes, 20 seconds and counting. We now have second stage liquid oxygen and third stage liquid oxygen supplies uh, pressurized as the countdown continues. Coming up on the two minute mark, we'll be standing by for the cue ball cover to be retracted shortly atop the Saturn V vehicle. Mark, T minus two minutes, T minus two minutes and counting, still going well. Propellant stable on board the vehicle. The crew here in the firing room monitoring uh, more than 300 red line values, watching temperatures and pressures to ensure they do not go above nominal. In the case that it did, uh, any one of these uh, key people could call in to hold the countdown. One minute, uh, 36 seconds and counting, uh, still going well. The pressurization sequence is still continuing in the vehicle. We're now 90 seconds away from liftoff, all still going well. We'll go on internal power with the vehicle at the 50 second mark in the count. We now get indications from our status board that all is still going well and the third stage is now completely pressurized. Coming up shortly on the one minute mark, we're now 70 seconds and counting. Second stage tanks are pressurized as our countdown continues. Mark, T minus 60 seconds and counting on Apollo 15. The astronauts are go, launch vehicle and spacecraft components all go as our countdown proceeds. Now 50 seconds, we have the power transfer. The vehicle now on the battery power in the vehicle and all is still going well. Lunar module pilot Jim Rowan making some final checks. Now passing the 40 second mark, spacecraft commander Dave Scott now has made his final check. That is aligning the guidance system. 30 seconds and counting. The guidance system will go internal at the 17 second mark. Now 25 seconds. We have complete clearance to launch. We are go. 20. 15 seconds. Guidance internal. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Ignition sequence start. Engines armed. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All engines running. Launch commit. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The tower is clear. Beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Every time it's just...
just so spectacular. It's hard to be able to tell us more. Shaking here again. Oh, yeah. Decreases rapidly. It becomes a massive setting. Just never can imagine how big that is. Now, uh, just coming up on two minutes there. Nine uh, miles downrange, 13, 14.5 miles height. Charlie? Mark, Mark, Charlie. Charlie. Roger, Mark, Charlie. Each of the S1 seized. Roger. We've got about 30 seconds to staging of the, of the cutoff of Each the first engine. Each of the engine. five S1C engines gulping three tons of fuel per second. The size of that plume. Inboard? That's your inboard? That's the inboard shut off. Right. Came a little earlier than we had. Oh, no, a 250, that's right, that's right. 238, we got the, uh, in another eight seconds, we should get the other four engines. Fly dynamics out. reports go for staging. There's practically no atmospheric pressure there now, so this... Boom, this goes out almost, almost infinitely. There's, There's staging. Hey, that's that <laughs> spectacular. Wow. Everybody thinks it's a whole bad day. Right, Yeah, she's got ignition. You can see that uh, big booster stage dropping away there. That's the engine. You have good thrust on the S2. All five are good. Okay. That's good news to the crew. You get all five of that second stage working. It means all five engines, of course, are on your 73 way. miles downrange, 47.9. Altitude. Roger. Staging is uh, there. Fire jet. There goes the tower. Roger, we confirm the skirt yeah, set. You're mode two. Roger, mode two. That tower, which has an escape rocket that can pull the command module away, Roger. is almost twice as big as the Redstone, which took Al Shepard and Gus Grissom on those first ballistic flights. Amazing. Flight. Uh, 155,000 pounds of thrust against 60,000, almost three times, against 60,000 pounds of thrust of the redstone. That's just the Coming up on 10,000 feet per second, Mark. Downrange 131, altitude 66. That redstone was used uh, just a little over 10 years ago. Yeah. This voice of Apollo, uh, mission control in Houston now, is Terry okay, White. Houston at four, the guides uh, has converged. The CMC is go, everything looks good. Okay, Colonel, what you put up here? Dave Scott. Now oh, 35% that... of the velocity like needed out. to orbit. Could also have been Worden, couldn't it, on command? Oh, well, Dave will pilot, but it would be Scott. Dave, uh, Dave is in the left seat on this phase of the mission, so he has to worry about the abort functions, and that's his go-no-go -no -go call. Downrange, 190 miles, altitude 79. 79 miles up and all the way down. We could still see it on the on the monitor. Isn't that amazing? Some camera. In fact, I suspect the people on the beaches are turning their eyes away. That's beyond the, the visible range now, uh, without aided eye. Yeah. I hope they're all getting in their cars and trying to drive away and get a, get away before we <laughs> we have to make <laughs> our getaway. Fifteen. Just in five minutes, everything looks nominal. You go. You just okay, go up. Thank you. Let's get up here. You just said 79 miles. I think I'll only get to go 20 miles. 40% of the velocity needed. Roger. <laughs> beautiful launch. Beautiful, beautiful launch. And these three fellows Down on the way to the moon. Downrange 71, altitude 88. We've got a few maneuvers before they really start off to the moon. 
They've got to go into a parking orbit around the Earth for one and a two-thirds turns of the Earth. That'll be at about 103 miles. Uh, now, that's statute miles. What you hear... Predicting nominal shutdown on the S2 stage. Seven times are nominal. A level sun time will be 8 plus 3, 4, and S2 cutoff at 9 or plus 0, 9 or. Over. Uh, Roger, 8 plus 3, 4, and 9 plus 0, 9. That's uh, capsule communicator, Dr. Yeah, Joseph Allen. S4B to COI. Mark, you have S4B to COI now. Mark, S4B to COI. So one of the scientist astronauts who is the capsule communicator from Houston. Terry White's the voice of Apollo. Flight director on duty right now, Gerald Griffin. Range, altitude 94.5. Velocity 15,000 feet per second. That uh, translates at, uh, at this point to about uh, 714,000 miles an hour, a little less than that, 12,000 breaths. You're hearing that this, these distances are in nautical miles. Uh, in statute miles, uh, the orbit will be at about 103 yeah, miles. Orbit capability. Well, just about when everybody gets accustomed to that, we're going to go to meters. <laughs> in fact, uh, NASA, of course, has decreed that all of their new dimensions as they go along will be worked in the metric system rather than the foot and inch and uh, miles. One of the now reasons range, this is necessary is so we can link up with the Russians. Quite true. Now approaching 65% of velocity needed for orbit. Velocity now 16,700 feet per second. Official time of liftoff 34 minutes, 00, zero seconds, point seven nine. Point seven nine. Oh, they Isn't that that's terrible? Okay. We'll do better next time. <laughs> Boy, the on-time liftoffs of this Apollo program have really been incredible. Just incredible. The significance of that, and people lose sight of it a lot, is that this booster was built for manned flight. The other vehicles we had were built for weapon systems, and uh, as a result, uh, uh, we, we always compromise one part or another, but this was built right from the very first nut and bolt to take any of the You're building a passenger train instead of a freight. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Communication seemed good on this liftoff, too. That was uh, quite clear. We couldn't to make out a few of those first words with, with, with liftoff, but uh, from there on out, it was good. Downrange, 660 miles, altitude 95 miles. 78% velocity required for orbit. 15, yes, sir. Go ahead. 15, yes, sir. Go ahead. I'll say again, sir. 15. Houston, 15, we didn't call. You got something? Hmm. That's just uh, you had me, you chef, down the uh, thrust. Looks good. Okay. That's beautiful, clear. That's good. This is mission control. Is that level time now? Roger. Yeah, the gang at the Cape now can uh, relax. The launch crew, they've got another success on their hands. Of course, not until they get an Earth orbit on the way to the moon, but Houston takes over just as you see in that picture when the booster, the base of that booster is clear of that tower. And it's mm -hmm. Houston's mission. They've got one of the longest periods now before the launch. About six seconds to staging. Next one's scheduled for March, as far as the Apollo program goes. Of course, they have other Stand launches from here. Four yes. Well, their launch crews will be working in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mark, you have mode four now. Great. Roger, and a good stage. Roger. Great. Now, that's very important, that Booster second stage burn. Just okay on the S-4B stage. And you've had, uh, you have good thrust on the S-4B. Roger. Yeah, this is the one that takes the load out of Earth orbit, and that's very yeah. important. She's burning well, and uh, we know we've got... Right, 960 miles down range, right 94.7 altitude, velocity 23,230. Significantly, we forget that, is that this engine has to shut off in Earth orbit and then restart again to get it out of Earth orbit on the way to the moon. Yeah. Uh, restarting uh, was one of the more traumatic things we thought about when we were getting up to the Apollo 7 mission, our first flight. Now we accept that as a normal routine, much like going up to your car in the morning, turning the key, and you, you assume it will start. So far, it has. And every Apollo mission is right on schedule. That's the engine that, as you say, Wally, boosts them on into the translunar orbit, uh, which comes after one and two-thirds orbits of the Earth, a little bit uh, later on in the morning. Uh, after that, they, uh, they then uh, 
uh, through the transposition and docking, going out, coming back uh, on the command module and picking up the lunar module, taking it away from the S-4B, the third stage, where it's uh, perched up there in the top, take it out, and they're on their okay, way. Houston, along. everything's looking uh, perfect. Uh, predicted cutoff time, 1-1 one, one plus 3-7. You know, I was just thinking, we're not going to leave Florida as fast this time, are we? We <laughs> got caught uh, thinking that it would be nominal when they would pick up this line out of there. And, of course, uh, Apollo 14 had trouble, and as Al Shepard said, they had to get their TV ratings up, and they did. Yeah. <laughs> 1281 miles. And that was happening. We were stuck in traffic. Yeah. Oh, right. 97% of velocity, 98% of velocity required. Mm. 25,143 feet per second. This uh, orbit insertion is supposed to come at uh, 11 minutes and 48 seconds in the flight, and that's another 15 seconds from now. Uh, we should be hearing that they're in the proper okay, orbit. On. One, one plus three, four. Roger. Right on time. Now we ought to Booster be here. confirms the S-4B has shut down. Okay, Houston, uh, get my motors are off, and the uh, S-4B oxidizer is 4-0, and the fuel is about 3-1. I just 4-0 and 3-1. Is that Scott's voice? Or? That was Scott. Yeah. Uh, he had to control the fuel. Okay, Gordo, we got ourselves at a 93.7 by 88.9. Shut down on a VI of plus 2, five, five, nine, five. H plus zero, 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 0008. Altitude plus zero, zero, 0932. Kind of fun to watch a little crop here in the studio with us. We're both going over those numbers mentally, and we accept that as being nominal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and Leo crop accept that it must be. <laughs> so they are in orbit. They are on their first trip around the Earth. They're at 100 and, about 103 miles, so statute miles. Uh, 15 Houston. Uh IU shows you in a 92.5 by 91.5. Radar confirms that, and the booster is safe. Okay, Gordo, good job. It was a very smooth ride all the way.